Hey YouTube, today we're looking at one of the most popular destinations of 2017, uh, the beautiful city of Hong Kong. We'll be looking at four of the best hotels, giving some tips to hopefully make your uh, trip a more enjoyable one, and looking at some of the must-see destinations while you're there. So stick around, hopefully you'll find the video uh, very informative and, um, and helpful. So let's climb aboard and get on our way. Okay, so if you're planning on using the public transport system in Hong Kong during your stay, it's recommended that you purchase your Airport Express tickets for the MTR, an abbreviation for Mass Transit Railway, before you start your journey. You can purchase these tickets at www.viator.com for a 30% discount on the price of the tickets that you would normally pay at Hong Kong Airport. The Airport Express service offers a quick and seamless 35 kilometer journey, approximately 22 to 25 minutes from the airport to the central business district of Hong Kong and Kowloon among other destinations. The services commence from the airport at 5.54 a.m. with the last train departing at 12.48 a.m. From the city to the airport, the first train departs at 5.50 a.m. with the last train leaving at 12.48 a.m. And from Kowloon, the first train starts at 5.53 a.m. and the last train is at 12.52 a.m. Once the service commences, there are trains departing every 10 to 12 minutes. Prices for the MTR Airport Express for adults aged 12 years and over are 110 Hong Kong dollars one way between the airport and Hong Kong Island or 115 Hong Kong dollars for a same day return ticket. Travelling between Kowloon and the airport is 100 Hong Kong dollars for a one-way ticket or 105 Hong Kong dollars for a same-day return ticket. There are group passes available. For instance, a family of up to four can buy a group pass for a discounted price of 250 Hong Kong dollars to Hong Kong Station or 220 Hong Kong dollars to Kowloon Station. Once you arrive at either Hong Kong or Kowloon, the MTR run a free shuttle bus service which passengers can use to reach many of the hotels that are close by and you'll find most of the major hotels in both areas have arrangements for this service. You can view the list of hotels, stops and routes etc for the free shuttle bus service along with other useful information on the link on screen now or I'll also provide it in the description box. So there are also other bus services that take you direct from the airport to certain hotels around Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. This is a much cheaper alternative to the MTR, more than half the cost, and is by far a more scenic journey. Travel time is a little longer than the MTR and can take up to 65 minutes, but there are many routes available other than the direct services that can get you close to your chosen hotel. If you do wish to opt for the bus service, you can get detailed information for route numbers and routes, stops, etc. on the link that's on screen now and also in the description. So to see your, if your hotel is on the list of direct services, you can view the list on, on the link on screen now or provided in the description. And while you're there, if you wish, you can purchase your bus tickets online on this site. Alternatively, there are private 24-hour shuttle services available. You can pre-book online at viator.com, which again are at a discounted price to what you would normally pay at the airport. Prices range from 404 Hong Kong dollars for services running between the times of 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. for hotels in Hong Kong, or 525 Hong Kong dollars for services running between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. For shuttles to Hotels in Kowloon, prices are from 364 Hong Kong dollars between the times of 7 a.m. to 11 and p.m. and the services running between 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. will cost around 487 Hong Kong dollars. If you're traveling alone, there are shared shuttle services. Once again, you can pre-book these online at viator.com. 
Prices are a very reasonable 211 Hong Kong dollars for hotels in Kowloon and 218 Hong Kong dollars for hotels in Hong Kong. Most of these services run at hourly intervals. You can get additional information for times and itinerary, etc. on the Viator site. Another must for visitors to purchase an Octopus Smart Card. The card has grown enormously in popularity since its conception and is now used for all modes of public transport and all taxi services now accept the card. Not only is the card useful for transportation around the city, but it can be used for so many other goods and services. The card is accepted in many retail outlets and can be used to purchase items at department stores, supermarkets, fast food outlets, restaurants, bookstores, convenience stores, cinemas, public swimming pools, car parks, schools and many other places. Among the many benefits of the card, there is the time saved in buying tickets for public transport. You won't need to line up at ticket issuing machines, etc. or scrounge around with the local currency, particularly if you're not used to it. As well, when purchasing public transport tickets in Hong Kong, you need to have the exact amount, as there is no change given. You won't have to deal with any of these problems if you have the card nice and handy. Most fares on the MTR are discounted using the Octopus card and passengers on the Airport Express are able to enjoy a free same day return journey. The best card for visiting tourists is the on loan Octopus card. It's a rechargeable stored value card and comes in four categories, adult, child, elder, or a personalized card. Identification isn't needed to purchase three of the online online cards but if you opt for a personalized card then a passport or some form of identification will be required you will need to put a 50 hong kong dollar deposit down when you purchase the card but the good thing is you're able to collect your deposit in full along with any remaining balance left on the card when you return it upon your departure you can store up to 1000 hong kong dollars on the card and you can reload it at any number of locations throughout the city. The card can be obtained at any Airport Express Customer Service Centre, any MTR Customer Service Centre and most Customer Service Centres of the other public transportation companies. The card remains active for three years after your last reload. If you happen to forget to return the card, but it can be reactivated at any time if you end up revisiting Hong Kong sometime in the future. A word of caution though, the card could demand an administrative charge while inactive, so just be aware of that as it could be a little expensive. So the hotels we're going to start at the luxury end of the scale and end with a budget hotel. Our first hotel is the Upper House. The Upper House is a five-star hotel located at 88 Queensway Admiralty, which is the heart of the city's business district. The position of the hotel is brilliant, being adjacent to the Pacific Place Shopping Centre, which is arguably the best shopping centre in Hong Kong. The hotel boasts the largest rooms in Hong Kong, with the smallest room starting at 730 squares. It has 117 rooms, including 21 suites and two penthouses. Rooms range from 4,025 Hong Kong dollars to 6,400 Hong Kong dollars. The rooms feature wonderfully spacious bathrooms and dressing areas. As with many of the hotels, it has fantastic views of Victoria Harbour or views of the island. The hotel was designed by Andre Fu, with the rooms having a calming and contemporary style designed to give a sense of relaxation, warmth and understated luxury. Amenities and services include free high-speed uh, internet and Wi-Fi, both in public areas and in room, complimentary mineral water upon arrival, unlimited in-room movies, the hotel gymnasium is free to use at your uh, leisure, laundry and dry cleaning services is available, uh, children's activities, babysitting, airport transfer service at an extra cost, in-room amenities include iPod dock, flat screen TV, in-room safe, a mini bar, coffee and tea making facilities, a daily complimentary newspaper, 
and Ren Clean skincare bathroom products. The restaurant in the hotel is the Cafe Grey Deluxe, a 21st century grand cafe and offers stunning views of Victoria Harbour. The restaurant marks the return of, to Hong Kong of uh, celebrated chef Grey Kuntz. The restaurant serves a modern international and European cuisine and are vegetarian friendly with vegan and gluten free options. A continental or American breakfast is available and they also serve afternoon tea, light meals and there is a great bar on site as well. Check in is at 2pm, check out is at noon. Uh, so what makes this di hotel different? Well most people who have stayed at the hotel speak very highly of the spacious area of the rooms and the bathrooms etc and their well thought out design. They also comment on the attention to detail that the staff give to each guest and how helpful they are to make sure your stay is as pleasant and comfortable as it can be. Or I've heard the phrase from so many that nothing seems to be too much of a bother to them. They go out of their way to assist you in every way possible. The upper house is one of the more pricey hotels in Hong Kong but the combination of the spacious rooms, the staff, the restaurant and the perfect location makes for money well spent and is worth every cent. A few tips for the rooms is to ask for a room with a view of Victoria Harbour and Kowloon and ask for the higher floors. If you can afford it, ask for a corner suite as they are well worth the money. Okay, so our next hotel is the Ritz Colton. It's a five star hotel located at the International Commerce Centre, number one Austin Road West, Kowloon, the tallest building in Hong Kong. The hotel's reception is located on the 103rd floor. It's directly above the Kowloon MTR station, which means it's around 25 to 35 minutes from Chek Lap Kok Airport on the Airport Express. However, to get to the station, or from the station to the hotel, you have to walk through Elements, which is one of the most confusing of Hong Kong's many shopping malls. The Ritz Carlton features 312 large rooms ranging from 51 square meters to 366 square meters for the hotel's largest suite. All rooms offer spectacular views of, uh, of either Kowloon, Victoria Harbor, or the South China Sea with a telescope scope placed in each room to take advantage of the great views. They range in price from 3,280 Hong Kong dollars to 4,970 Hong Kong dollars. The hotel is set on floors 102 to 118 of the ICC building. The highlights of the hotel include a stylish indoor pool and jacuzzi on the 118th floor with a 28 by 7 meter LED screen on the ceiling along with ec excellent views a sleek gymnasium and a top-notch spa located on the 116th floor featuring nine deluxe street rooms and two couple suites. The location of the hotel is okay but a little out of the way for leisure travelers as there are no uh, local attractions within walking distance. However, in saying that, public transport is only a few minutes walk which makes it easy to access any of the major tourist attractions. Amenities and services include 24-hour room service, a laundry and dry cleaning service, multilingual staff, adult supervised children's activities, 24-hour airport shuttle service for an additional charge, 24-hour check-in, babysitting, hot tub, a heated pool, nightclub, an in-room massage is also available, spa services, body wraps and body scrubs, a facial treatments, aromatherapy treatments, steam room in spa, a wheelchair accessibility, in-room amenities include decadent touches such as plush beds with 400 to 600 thread count linen, iPod docks, Nespresso coffee makers, high-end toiletries, a separate shower and deep soaking bathtub in beautifully designed bathrooms. Slippers and bathroom, uh, bathrobes are also provided 42-inch smart TVs with pay movies, Netflix and a Blu-ray DVD player. There is a buffet breakfast available each morning and is served between 6.30 to 10.30 a.m. It has six dining venues including the state-of-the-art Michelin-starred Italian restaurant Tosca, 
Tosca is a fine dining restaurant overlooking the ocean, serving lunch and dinner and is open daily. Reservations are required. A two Michelin starred Chinese restaurant, restaurant Tin Lung Heen, that overlooks the ocean and is open daily for lunch and dinner. Once again, you'll need to reserve a table. The lounge and bar features an, uh, features an international dining menu overlooking the ocean and serves breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as light fare. There is a children's menu available and patrons can enjoy drinks at the bar. It's open daily and again, reservations are required. Cafe 103, which serves its signature chocolate afternoon tea. Cafe 103 specializes in international cuisine, open daily for lunch and dinner, and you'll need to make a reservation. The rooftop bar, Ozone, is a truly stunning venue at 490 meters above sea level, offering stunning views. And Alma's Cafe Caviar Bar is an on-site champagne bar and is open daily with happy hour being conducted every day. Tips for the Ritz-Colton is pay the extra for club lounge access. In addition to 24-7 access to meals and drinks, amenities include, among other things, a complimentary ironing service for two items daily and is complimentary and a complimentary limo service to anywhere in Kowloon on a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, <coughs> ask for rooms on the Victoria Harbour Central Hong Kong side. If possible, ask for room 16 on floor 112 for stunning views all around, or any corner room from the 110th floor and above for fantastic views of Victoria Harbour and the South China Sea. Hong Kong is notorious for its haze and fog, so these factors can hinder those perfect views, particularly in the summer months with the hotel being so high, so that's something to consider as you won't get those views every day. Check out for the hotel is at noon, so our next hotel is the Hotel, I has the, uh, hotel Icon. It's a 4.5 star located at number 17 Science Museum Road, Sim Sha Soi East. Sim Sha Soi is a major tourist hub of Hong Kong and is one of the city's main shopping areas, having many high-end shops and restaurants. The flagship stores of several luxury brands are located in the Sim Sha Soi section of Canton Road. Hotel Icon is a teaching hotel and is fully owned by the Hong Hong Kong Polytechnic University. It has 262 guest rooms ranging in sizes from 36 to 80 square meters. The price range of the rooms are from 1,652 Hong Kong dollars to 3,237 Hong Kong dollars. There's a ballroom, convention center, three restaurants, an event and exhibition space, a health club and fitness center, all on site. Upon check-in, you'll be required to show government issued photo identification and a credit card for a cash deposit will be required for incidental charges. The rooms are bright, unfussy and individually furnished. Around 80% of the rooms have excellent unimpeded views of Victoria Harbour. All have a complimentary minibar, Nespresso, free Wi-Fi and a smartphone with free international calls to 25 countries. Every room has a Japanese style bath, so the bath isn't long but it's deep. Other, room, other in-room amenities include premium TV channels, pay TV, free newspapers, free bottled water, premium bedding, iron and ironing board, refrigerator, bathrobes and slippers, table computer, uh, sorry, tablet computer. In-room accessibility is available upon request when booking your rooms. Guests who stay on the club floor for a minimum of two nights are eligible for a free Tesla car ride to the airport. Club suites include access to a lounge with free breakfast and additional in-room amenities such as a Boss sound system. There's also stunning Vivian, the uh, stunning Vivian Tam suite, a multi-room unit created by the fashion designer and is a splash of luxury for sure. Amenities and services include heated rooftop pool and a pool bar that doubles as a cocktail and juice bar a 24-hour fitness center equipped with treadmills, cardio bikes, and a full range of weight training machines, a full-service Angsana spa with four treatment rooms, along with a sauna and steam room, an aromatic bath room, body facial hydrotherapy treatments, body wraps and scrubs, massages and aromatherapy, Ayurvedic 
treatments, a relaxing lounge on the pool floor with free tea, coffee and light snacks designed for travellers arriving early or departing after checkout who need a place to take a load off. Limo town car service, express check-in, check-out, 24-hour front desk, dry cleaning and laundry service, free area and shopping centre shuttle that leaves approximately every 20 minutes. Airport transportation at an extra charge of around 700 Hong Kong dollars, babysitting and childcare at an extra charge, complimentary cribs and infant beds. So uh, for dining there are three restaurants within the hotel and they are above and beyond located on the top of the hotel with fantastic views plus an experienced wine consultant. The restaurant serves Cantonese cuisine and also offers a buffet breakfast. The next restaurant is The Market, which is located on the second floor. It's an open plan restaurant featuring open kitchens and can accommodate six, uh, up to 160 diners. The Market serves the, whole, the world on a plate through a buffet of international classics prepared by chefs who come from the respective countries they represent. Last but not least is Green, a cafe by morning and a casual brasserie and bar for the rest of the day and is situated under one of Asia's largest vertical gardens on the lobby level. So check-in times for the hotel is at 2pm and check-out is at noon. What makes this hotel stand out? Well the location of the hotel Oak Icon is very central to the shopping district of Sim Sha Soi being only a 10 minute walk from Nathan Road and Peking Road and is only 15 minutes from the one and all in one retail complex and is the tallest retail complex in Hong Kong. K11 shopping mall and Miramar shopping centre. Most people say that walking around the neighbourhood surrounding the hotel is an absolute pleasure. Also don't forget the hotel offers a free shuttle to shopping centres and around the general area of Sim Sha Soi. There are many other places of interest all within half a kilometre of the hotel such as the Hong Kong Science Museum, the Hong Kong uh, Coliseum, the Hong Kong Museum of History, Tsim Sha Soi Centre, the Sky 100 Hong Kong Observation Deck is only two kilometres away and the PMQ, once a 19th century college that has been transformed into a creative hub with independent shops design studios and quirky restaurants is three and a half kilometres from the hotel. The Hong Kong Avenue of Stars and Nutsford Terrace, a pedestrianised area full of cafes and alfresco eateries, are all within 15 minute walk. Other points that make this hotel a standout is the service from its staff, which is said to be something else. This being a training hotel, a portion of the staff are students vying to make it into the hospitality industry. The young, enthusiastic staff are determined to do whatever it takes to make your stay a happy one. They're eager to learn and more than open to suggestions, so if there are moments of hesitancy, be patient and offer obliging advice. But for the most part, they do an excellent job. Overall, this is an excellent establishment with its central location, brilliant and smart design, very reasonable prices for entry into a luxurious environment, offering a lovely buffet breakfast and beautiful views and very obliging and helpful staff. Next hotel and our last hotel is the Ho uh, Tea Hotel. It's a 4.5 star hotel and part of the Hotel and Tourism Institute. This unusual hotel consists of one floor within the Vocational Training Council's complex in Pock Fulham located on the sixth floor at 145 Pock Fulham Road, Hong Kong. This is a school building and during term hundreds of students flock in and out of the complex from the bus stops but once you reach the reception you're in a pleasant and perfectly professional environment. The way to get to the hotel is to take the A10 bus from the airport, alight at stop number 26 then cross the road and walk about 15 to 16 metres in the, in the direction that you came from and look for the blue signs on the wall, greet the security guard at the gate, go up the driveway and bear left. Now the T Hotel is a training concept hotel committed to providing training in the field of hospitality and tourism. The hotel provides training in all 
aspects of the industry from reservations, reception, restaurants, room service, housekeeping, business centre, gym, massage, security, etc. The hotel is operated by trainees under the supervision of experienced professionals from the various fields of the hospitality industry. The hotel comprises of only 30 rooms, including suites and family rooms, with panoramic views of the South China Sea. If you're planning on taking a suite, you'll need to book well and truly in advance, as these are very popular and are quite difficult to grab. The impeccably, uh, the impeccably clean rooms and bathrooms are far bigger than those in most of the central hotels, and the ones facing the sea really do have magnificent views especially during sunset. The rooms facing the mountains uh, look towards the peak. In-room amenities include a refrigerator and a fully stocked minibar, coffee and tea making facilities, a music system, a full length bath and a television in the bathroom. A smartphone is in each room for local and international calls along with maps and a guidebook already installed for your convenience. Each of the suites comprise of a cosy living room, an impressive corner bedroom with panoramic views across the South China Sea and outlying islands. They are astonishingly spacious and each have additional living room space, a kitchenette equipped with a microwave, a fridge, a coffee maker, plus a separate guest washroom. As for dining, the Tea Hotel offers a range of options for wining and dining. It boasts two lounges, two restaurants, and a 24-hour in-room dining service. The training restaurants are run by the English-speaking Dining Society, whose aim is self-explanatory. One serves Western food, one Chinese, and both are very good value. They provide the students of the HTI the opportunity to practice both their professional and communication skills in an authentic working environment. With mentoring, dedicated apprentice chefs create delectable cuisines complemented by the friendly service from the food and beverage students. The Western Training Restaurant offers a selection of classical and contemporary European cuisine for lunch Additionally, there are occasional special themed dinners with guest chefs scheduled throughout the year. The Western Restaurant is open Monday to Friday, 12 noon to 2.30 p.m. except public holidays, and 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. only on those special occasions when the guest chefs are on site. The facilities are open only to hotel guests and members of the English Speaking Society. The Chinese Training Restaurant features an authentic array of Chinese regional cuisines prepared by students of the Chinese Culinary Institute. It's open every Monday to Friday for lunch from 12 noon to 2.30 p.m. except for the public holidays and every Friday evening for, for dinner from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Should you wish to dine in private, your, uh, pri dine in, private in your room, the hotel's menu has plenty of choices including pasta, salads and sandwiches. Then there's the lounge with its bright and airy ambience and is at the heart of the hotel. It offers all day dining and bar, has a lovely balcony overlooking the sea and if you're asked to eat outside the obliging staff will set about in arranging a table for you. The bar may not be the most fantastic in the city but the views are spectacular and it's a great place to sit and enjoy a drink before dinner or just unwind after a busy day. It's open from 6.30 a.m. until 10 p.m. The lounge is where breakfast is served and the all-day dining menu that's available has a choice of international specialties. Apart from the dining areas within the hotel, other places to eat and drink are in Kennedy Town, a 10-minute taxi ride from the hotel. This area has sprouted new restaurants and bars in recent years and is now one of the hottest dining areas on the island. The training spa offers treatments by the students on a first come first serve basis or a, with a 30 day advance reservation. Treatments offered are foot reflexology and lomi lomi, a Hawaiian style holistic massage and tui na, a traditional Chinese treatment.
All of these will cost you 480 Hong Kong dollars for 90 minutes. There is also a cell M6 treatment at a cost of 540 Hong Kong dollars for 60 minutes. The spa is open seven days a week, including public holidays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., with the last appointment being accepted at 3 p.m. The gymnasium that's available is spacious with state-of-the-art equipment at your disposal. Now amenities include free high-speed internet and Wi-Fi, a spa, fitness center with gym and workout room, a shuttle bus service, uh, dry cleaning, meeting rooms, business center with internet access, laundry service, there is access for guests with disabilities, but be aware there is only one room specifically tailored for disabled guests. Prices range from 780 Hong Kong dollars to 1,030 Hong Kong dollars per night. As mentioned earlier, the hotel is a little out of the way and would probably not suit a business person, but if you're visiting for leisure and you don't mind being out of the thick of things, then the T Hotel will be ideal for you. In saying that, there are plenty of buses that stop right outside the hotel's front doorstep, plus the hotel provides a small card noting what buses go where. There are no MTR stations close by, but since the extension of the MTR Island Line, the HKU or the University Station is now around a 10 minute taxi ride from the hotel. As well, don't forget the shuttle bus service that the hotel itself runs into the city for guests to take advantage of. Just to mention once again, the hotel is a training hotel and is run entirely by students. You'll need to check in with a little patience, so be understanding with the students who are learning their craft within the hotel. Show them respect and by all means give advice, it will be met with open arms. Uh, they want um, they want to do their best and you won't encounter more willing staff anywhere else in the city but that's the two-way street as you're there to help them the check-in times for the hotel start at 3 p.m. and check-out time is 11 a.m. some tips for the hotel get a room with a sea view overlooking the bay for beautiful sunsets have an evening drink on the balcony in the lounge for some breathtaking views of the hillside, sea and islands that rival many of Hong Kong's picturesque scenes. Early evening is particularly special as you can watch the sun set below the western horizon. The hotel is undergoing exterior redecoration work from present to the 22nd of June 2018. So what sets the hotel apart from the others? It's the value. Because the hotel is predominantly attended to by students, the service could at times be flawed. Also, the proximity of the hotel is by no means central, but if you can be patient with the learning staff and the proximity to the attractions is of no concern and you're seeking accommodating, high quality, plush and a unique stay in Hong Kong at extra super good value, then the Tea Hotel is the place for you. Don't assume Hong Kong is as free and open as the West. Under British rule, for 156 years, Hong Kong reverted back to Chinese sovereignty in 1997 and is now a special administrative region. While mainland China is communist, Hong Kong enjoys a limited democracy. It's a complex stance between the two influences. Essentially, one country, two systems. The basic law of Hong Kong ensures that their government shall safeguard the rights and freedoms of the residents. Clearly, Hong Kong embraces more legal freedoms than the People's Republic of China does, including the right to assemble, but Beijing is starting to flex its power more and more. As we've seen in the recent electoral reforms, only candidates that supported China's party line were deemed eligible. Activists in Hong Kong have taken to the streets to protest this encroaching influence from the mainland. Some believe that emails are being monitored and internet censorship is happening. Travellers should be aware of these rising tensions and be cautious about engaging in politically charged communications. Now don't be squeamish when, when making your way around the streets of Hong Kong and so forth, as Hong Kong has been nicknamed the Fragrant Harbour and it can be a sensory overload for visitors not used to its many pungent aromas. 
cacophonous noises and unfamiliar flavors. Some of the sights, smells, sounds and tastes can be off-putting if you don't have the right attitude. Resist the instinct to cry yuck at the sight of chicken feet or the smell of durian. Embrace the chaos, indulge in new experiences, brave some street food and tolerate the assault on your familiar sensibilities. That's part of the adventure of traveling to an exotic destination like Hong Kong. Now when you're visiting street markets, don't overpay. Hong Kong offers a vast range of exciting street markets where you can buy just about any type of consumer good imaginable. However, as is often the case with these sorts of establishments, tourists often end up giving in to pushy merchants and paying too much. Learn the art of haggling. If you can hone your bargaining skills, you will often be able to buy things for little over half the asking price. Knockoffs are bound here, so make sure you know what you're paying for. Now don't estimate the, the summer heat of Hong Kong as it has a humid subtropical climate where summer temperatures during the daytime can be over 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit and the insufferable humidity can make it even feel even more oppressive. You'll also feel the sweltering heat a lot more in the crowded urban areas, so if you're going sightseeing, you'll need to be prepared. Instead of walking, consider using public transport to get around and try to do your outdoor exploring in the cooler mornings or evenings. Take plenty of water with you and take breaks in air-conditioned spaces along the way. On that note, the air conditioning is often cranked up excessively cold, so if you're popping in and out of buildings, you'll go from one extreme to the other. Now don't take taxis if, if the, you can avoid it. Taxis have earned a bad reputation in many countries around the world, and Hong Kong is, of, is no exception. While you're not likely to get ripped off if you stick only to official taxis, it's still an unnecessarily expensive way to get around. Also, due to the high traffic, it can take a long time to get anywhere through the gridlock. Instead, try using the efficient and affordable mass transit railway around the metropolis. Buy an Oyster card if you're going to use this more than a few times. Also, don't take the Star Ferry at rush hour. With its huge crowds, Hong Kong can be an intense and daunting city for the first time visitor. The Star Ferry is a great way to get across the harbour between Kowloon and Hong Kong Island, but avoid peak, the peak times from 8am to 9.30am and 6pm to 7pm, when the commuters make the congestion unbearable. Don't expect to get anywhere fast by walking around the city centre either, as it's thick with, with pedestrians. If you're travelling with someone else, be sure to stick together and have a way to keep in contact or a place to meet up later on in the likely event that you'll lose each other. Now don't bother with visiting the Sky Terrace. Look, Hong Kong offers some spectacular city panoramas, but you don't always need to pay extra for the view. Instead of going to popular and overpriced tourist traps such as the Sky Terrace, consider some of the other options. Take the escalator to the top of the peak Galleria Mall where the viewing platform is free and the crowds are nil. Some other options include Central Plaza, the Bank of China, 2 IFC and 1 Island East. There's something offensive about paying to go up the peak tram and then having to shell out even more to gaze upon the sky terrace view. Speaking of the tram, try to avoid it as well, as most people will tell you, this is a must do. The peak is undoubtedly one of the best vantage points in Hong Kong, but taking the overpriced, overcrowded tourist tram up to the top isn't the only way up there. Instead, if you're fit, consider hiking up the hill using the designated footpaths. There are various trails and routes to consider. If you want to avoid the summer heat, you will need to go early in the morning. Now don't estimate, underestimate the language barrier, although English remains an official language in Hong Kong, you'll undoubtedly still find a major language barrier in certain areas. Learning a few basic Cantonese phrases, and note not, a man, not Mandarin, is not as difficult as you might think, and it can go a long way. 
If you need to ask anyone for directions, try to find younger people to help since they're more likely to speak English. Be aware that taxi drivers rarely speak English, so have a map or written address on hand to convey where you want to go. Now don't forget about the entry requirements. While Hong Kong is an autonomous de dependency of mainland China, it has its own entry requirements. Citizens of Australia and most Western nations don't need any visa to visit Hong Kong for a period of less than 90 days. However, if you have a plan to pop over the border to Shenzhen for a cheap shopping or other parts of mainland China, you'll need to need a separate visa. If you are going to China, you can obtain a 10-year multiple entry visa for visits of less than 72 hours. Now don't expect travelling to mainland China to be easy, although the city of Shenzhen is just across the border from Hong Kong, getting to mainland China is often fraught with delays. Most nationalities can get a visa at the border when travelling on the MTR system, but US nationals won't be able to do this. Instead, you'll need to organise your documents beforehand if you intend to continue on to mainland China, even if only for a day trip. Things have gotten more streamlined in recent years, but when it comes to China, it's always advisable to be prepared for bureaucratic hassles. Now, don't forget about the different currencies. While China uses the yuan, Hong Kong still uses its own currency, the Hong Kong dollar. Although you shouldn't have any problem changing money anywhere in the region, many visitors forget about the different currencies. If you are arriving via mainland China, you'll need to withdraw or change some money as soon as you get to Hong Kong. So now, don't neglect the rest of Hong Kong um, during your stay. Hong Kong is more than skyscrapers and street markets. Beyond the bustling downtown of Hong Kong Island and the crazy crowds of Kowloon, there are outlying communities and 260 small islands to explore. Over 70% of Hong Kong Island is comprised of mountains and parks. Venture into the new territories and you'll find traditional walled towns like Kat Hing Wai, see the fishing villages on Lama Island, hit the beaches in Lantau, surf in Big Wave Bay, peruse the markets in Stanley and Repulse Bay, visit Chung Chow Island and its Chung Po Sai um, pirate caves. Hong Kong is a diverse and wondrous place, well worth venturing beyond the core. Now some quick tips on etiquette. The Chinese Hong Kong locals tend to stand close when talking, so don't feel uncomfortable by this. They don't engage in body contact, so don't hug, kiss or pat people on the back. <coughs> Excuse me. Winking at somebody is considered a very rude gesture. To request your bill at a restaurant, etc., make a writing motion with your hand. To beckon a waiter or hotel staff member or anyone to come to you, extend your arm, palm down and make scratching, a scratching motion with your fingers. Never point with your finger. This is usually only used for animals. Point with your hand open. The Chinese find belching, slurping, clanging utensils and making loud noises at the dinner table acceptable, sometimes even complimentary. If you're not using your chopsticks, either lay them out in front of you or place them on the rest provided. Never point at somebody or something with your chopsticks. Don't place your chopsticks upright in your rice bowl. This is done at funerals when a bowl of rice with chopsticks standing upright within the bowl is placed at the altar. Laying your chopsticks across each other is considered bad luck. Don't rub your chopsticks together as this implies that you've been given poor quality chopsticks that may have splinters. At a Chinese restaurant, if you wish to be served more tea, place the lid of the tea pot upside down, or if it's hinged, leave the lid of the pot open. Don't show your soles, the soles of your feet to others. Don't display any form of affection in public, like holding hands, kissing, etc. Any behavior in the extreme is frowned upon. Now places that are a must-see in Hong Kong 
uh, we will start with um, Victoria, Park, uh, Victoria Peak. To get to Victoria Peak, there are five options to choose from. As mentioned before, you can hike, but this isn't a good choice if you're not fit as the climb is long and steep. For those who wish to tackle the hike, there are a few points along the walk where you will catch up, uh, where you will catch some nice views. For the most part though, you won't see much more than the backs of tall buildings and trees higher up. Hiking from uh, Pok Fu Lam or Aberdeen is a little more interesting. Option two is taking the peak tram. My advice is to avoid the tram as um, mentioned earlier, as the queues can get very long and the wait can be in the hours, not minutes, particularly if you arrive after mid-morning. There's tours that you can join and they can offer priority tickets where you are able to jump the queue, but also be aware there are days where difficult to, uh, different tours, etc. have more than likely sold quite a few of these priority tickets, which can result in a priority lineup. Also, the tram can become quite crowded and generally not a comfortable ride. But if you do opt for the tram, you can get to the lower peak terminus by getting the 15C bus from the piers or city hall. If you're nearer, such as Lan Kwai Fong or Lindhurst Tower, take the 12 or 12M bus, get off the bus on Garden Road. The 15C stops directly outside the tram terminus while the 12 and 12M buses stop outside St John's Cathedral and then it's about a two minute walk up the hill to the terminus. Ride the tram all the way to the top. Public buses go all the way from Central, either the Piers or Exchange Square to the Peak Tower. So catch bus 15 underneath Exchange Square. There are extra buses running during the mornings only. Stay on the bus for over 30 stops. A light when the bus goes inside the underground enclosed road level bus stop, which is part of the Galleria. Take the escalator up into the building and then out into the plaza. The next option is, of course, a taxi, which is the more expensive option, but that said, it has its advantages. You should be able to get a taxi back down as there are taxis on the Galleria level. You can ask the driver to take you to Victoria Peak Garden on Mount Austin Road. Take a map with you and show the driver the map so he will take you all the way to the car park beside the lookout point. When you arrive in the car park, the garden, uh, when you arrive in the car park of the garden, you will see the concrete viewing, viewing pavilion, which looks like this. It's also worth continuing up the footpath for another five minutes to the top of the Mount Austin Road where there is a rough grassy lawn just under the radio towers which has great views of both sides of Hong Kong Island. The next option is taking one of the green minibuses. Green minibus number one goes from Central all the way to the Peak Tower. The fare is around $10.20 Hong Kong per person and there is no child discount. You're guaranteed a seat though for your fare as there are no standing passengers on minibuses. Catch the bus at the back or seaside of the IFC Mall or as it goes along Man Hui Street towards the centre of Central. It also stops along um, it's outside of City Hall on Connaught Road which is a good place to get on board. The route is rather long as it stops at several places along the way including Matilda Hospital which is off the direct route so this isn't a recommended option unless you really want to see some more different parts of the mid-level and the peak along the way. Now opening times of the peak the tram uh, runs from 7 a.m. to midnight Monday to Sunday and public holidays. The peak to tower terminus, including the Sky Terrace viewing platform, and some shops open as early as 8 a.m. on Sunday and public holidays, but only at 10 a.m. on all other days. They stay open until 11 p.m. every day. Just be aware there are some, in particular smaller shops, that may not open until later, depending on demand. The Peak Galleria is open at 10 a.m. every morning until 10 p.m. every day regardless. Once again, some smaller shops may keep shorter hours. For example, the Dimex Bookshop closes at 7, 8 or 9 p.m. depending on the day of the week, although it does open at 10 a.m. each day. The Visitor Centre, which is located between the Peak Tower and the Peak Galleria, is open from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. each day. Now, Victoria Peak prices. 
a peak tram sky pass will cost you 99 Hong Kong dollars return or 84 Hong Kong dollars for a single adult ticket. A child between the ages of 11 to uh, of 3 to 11 and a senior age 65 and above will cost 47 Hong Kong dollars return or 38 Hong Kong dollars for a single. For a Sky Terrace 428 ticket, the cost is 52 Hong Kong dollars per adult or 26 Hong Kong dollars for a child 3 to 11 and a senior age 65 and above. This peak El Aria and its viewing platform is absolutely free of charge. Now Hong Kong Disneyland is a theme park opened in September of 2005 and after a rocky start now attracts 8 to 9 million visitors annually. It's had extensions and refurbishments since its conception and now has seven themed areas with another two areas being announced last year that is planned to open in 2020 and 2023. The attractions open now is Adventureland which is the largest of all the Disney parks and features a large island area which is home to Tarzan's treehouse. Guests board a small boathouse and circumnavigates the treehouse in an amazing African setting and and then winds down the stream past ancient Cambodian ruins overtaken by the jungle on to an area where an African veldt comes into view. There are many scenes and scenarios that the guests experience through, throughout the journey down the river cruise. Fantasyland features Sleeping Beauty's castle as its icon. It also has several attractions based on classic Disney movies such as The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Dumbo, The Flying Elephant and Cinderella's Carousel. There's also Fantasy Gardens where you can meet costumed Disney characters, Grizzly Gulch featuring thrill rides and photo shoot opportunities, Main Street USA which serves as the entrance to the park and has a theme set in an American small town from the years 1890 to 1910. Mystic Point is a relatively new theme land set in 1909 at an adventurer's outpost in a dense uncharted rainforest surrounded by forces and supernatural events. The site features Mystic Manor, home of Lord Henry Mystic and his mischievous monkey Albert. There's also Tomorrowland since opening a number of unique attractions have been added to Tomorrowland including Autopia and Stitch Encounter the first ever Marvel attraction in a Disney theme park, the Iron Man Experience, opened in January 2017. And of course, Toy Story Land, based on the movie Toy Story and its characters. Now prices vary depending on which package you choose, but a one day or a two day standard park ticket starts at 619 Hong Kong dollars. Now we move on to Ocean Park Hong Kong, or just Ocean Park. And this is a marine mammal park, oceanarium, animal theme park and amusement park. It's the largest theme park in Asia and the seventh most popular theme park in the world. With over 80 attractions and rides and covering an area of 91.5 hectares or 226 acres, the park boasts four roller coasters, rainforest and polar displays, an aquarium featuring the world's largest aquarium dome and of course it's the home of the giant panda habitat. The park comprises of two main attraction areas, the waterfront and the summit, and these are subdivided into eight attraction zones. The first one being Marine World, which comprises of marine animal attractions, an aquarium, and a number of rides, including the Dragon Roller Coaster, the Abyss and Turbo Drop Ride. Thrill Mountain is a carnival themed area of 222,800 square feet. It offers five rides, eight booth games, as well as food, beverages and merchandise. Adventureland comprising of the Mine Train, one of the four roller coasters within the park and a ride called Raging River, a water ride that takes passengers through tropical waterfalls. There's the Polar Adventure, which is, which features the North Pole Encounter, South Pole Spectacular and Arctic Fox Den as well as the Arctic Blast roller coaster. Animal attractions within the zone comprises of penguins, walruses, seals, sea lions, snowy owls and Arctic foxes. The rainforest, now this zone has dozens of avian, terrestrial and aquatic animals living inside buttress roots accompanying visitors on their immersive exploration of diversity. 
Aqua City is a zone that covers an area of 200,000 square feet and features the Grand Aquarium, Sea Life Carousel, Old Hong Kong that offers an <coughs> immersive experience of culture, history and delicacies of Hong Kong between the 1950s and the 1970s and Waterfront Plaza bring a rotating mix of shows, magic and other acts performed by clowns, acrobats and jugglers. Uh, the next zone is the Amazing Asian Animals which features giant panda adventure and panda village where you will see the famous giant pandas Ying Ying and Li Li. Other attractions include Gator Marsh, Goldfish Treasures, Hong Kong Jockey Club Sichuan Treasures and Emerald Trail, all displaying rare and exotic Asian animals. Whiskers Harbour is a zone featuring attractions for, young, for younger children and covers an area of 14,200 square feet. There are many activities for the little ones to be immersed in, including balloon up, up and away, frog hopper, merry-go-round, bouncer house and more. The park is open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Admission for persons from 12 years to adult is 480 Hong Kong dollars. From 3 years to 11 is 240 Hong Kong dollars. And a child under 3 years of age is, has um, admi a free admission. The admission fee includes most of the facilities except skill games and coin operated games. To get to Ocean Park, there is a city bus service, Route 629, departing every 30 minutes from the Central Ferry Piers, commencing at 9.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. The cost is $10.60 Hong Kong for a single adult fare. Be prepared to spend a whole day there as the park is very large and many, many attractions to see. The next um, attraction is the 10,000 Buddhas Monastery. This is a mid 20th century Buddhist temple located in Sha Tin, Hong Kong at 220 Pai Tao Village. This is not an actual monastery as no monks reside at the complex and is so managed solely by lay persons. Both the temple and the pagoda are listed as grade 3 historic buildings by the government of Hong Kong. Another misnomer, despite the name of the monastery being 10,000 Buddhas, there is actually almost 13,000 Buddhas on site. The monastery has been featured in a number of films and television series over the years, including the 1995 American action series Vanishing Sun, the 2002 local crime thriller Infernal Affairs, just to name a couple. This is a must-see destination with its beautiful scenery and the breathtaking views once you reach the top. It can be a difficult place to find, but if you take the MTR to Sha Tin Station, once you exit the station, stay to your right, walk along the pavement, make a right at the, st at the uh, tennis court on Pai Tai Street, then make the first right on Xiong Wo Chi Road, You'll see a government office, walk to the end of the street, it looks like a dead end but it isn't, and there you will see the stairs leading up to the temple. There is around 500 stairs to climb and it will take a fairly fit person around 20 minutes without stopping. There are plenty of benches along the way. If you need to take a break, the walk can take up to 40 minutes but there uh, golden Buddhas lining the path along with the odd monkey to keep you company, which makes the journey an interesting one. If you are planning to visit the monastery and you're in Hong Kong during the summer months, it's advisable to choose to visit either early in the morning or late afternoon. Take water with you and wear a comfortable pair of shoes. Also, take toilet paper with you as there is none within the complex. Now there is a vegetarian restaurant at the site, but if this is not for you, then have a feed before you ascent to the temple as no outside food is allowed. Be aware of monks asking for almond or donations along the path. They are not real monks, so ignore them and just continue on your way. Make sure you go all the way to the top as the views that greet you are just amazing. You can spend an easy two to three hours at the temple and then on your way down, go the back way to stop at the bee farm where you can buy some honey and talk to the owner who will be more than happy to explain all the different types of bees on his farm and a commentary on how the process of honey making is achieved. It may sound like a lot of hard work to get to the site, 
but take your time on your journey and enjoy the many sights along with the monkeys and turtles etc. Once you get to the top it really is worthwhile. The temple is outstanding and colourful, the views of the city are breathtaking and the whole peacefulness and serenity of the place is welcoming after the hustle and bustle of Hong Kong. So as I touched on earlier, Hong Kong is diverse and extends well outside of the city boundaries. If you have the time, be sure to explore the many attractions beyond the realms of the city. Be sure to visit places such as Lama Island, Lantau Island and the Big Buddha. Hong Kong is home to 260 islands, so there's plenty of choices with their many features of dining and fishing villages where you can select your meal from the catch of the day. If you are going to do some island hopping, do your research. As the islands are so different from one another, you'll want to know what each island is all about rather than just picking one off the map. Hike along the Dragon's Back or relax on some of the most beautiful beaches in the world including Shek O, Stanley and Repulse Bay or for a more secluded spot head to the pristine Tai Long Wan which is arguably one of the most beautiful spots in all of Hong Kong. So now we move on to the best times that we would um, that we suggest you visit Hong Kong. Um, to end our review, we'll look at the typical weather conditions throughout the year. The weather in Hong Kong is subtropical. There are four distinct seasons. There are only a few months of the year that are ideal for visiting. Following um, is a breakdown of weather conditions for the year and a guide to the best months to make your journey to the, uh, to the island. Now January is cold and clear, February colder, in fact the coldest month, skies are grey but clear, March cold with some warm spells, some bright days but also heavy fog on days, April warming and mostly clear with rare fog and occasional rain but also days of blistering sun, May hot and often overcast with some rain, June hot and humid with blue sky days and occasional rain, July has the bluer skies, rare rain but very hot, occasional typhoons, August hottest and highest humidity, the hardest time to go for a walk, typhoons, typhoons are possible but rare, September hot with some rain and falling humidity, October cool winds, much lower humidity, this is the great month for you to visit Hong Kong. November cool to cold, dry and sometimes windy, also a good time to visit. December cold with grey skies alternating with bright sun and blue skies. So that's my review for, uh, for um, visiting Hong Kong. I hope that um, it helps you and makes your uh, stay and your journey um, less you know, hassle, hassle and uh, much more enjoyable where you can concentrate on what you're going to do and not how to plan and, um, and where to go and, what, and what, how you, you're going to do it. So thanks for watching. I um, hope to see you in my next video and I hope my, uh, my view, review is, is very helpful for you. Okay, so we'll bye for now and see you next time.